In today's paper, we're going to discuss uh, 2017 Feature Pyramid Network, FPN, for object detection. And this work is from Kai Min He, Ross uh, Gyoshik, and the other folks here. So this uh, presentation is basically my personal reading notes. Um, what I'm trying to focus on is more intuitions why using FPN and why does it help. So the inspirations of the FPN, you can you can trade back to the to the feature pyramid built on upon image pyramid. This is basically what we call the feature image pyramid after um, in in these presentations. That is actually as you can see here. Once you have a, a image and you can do some upsampling or stop down sampling to um, have a different scale, and um, you can use your traditional like human or handcraft uh, computer vision algorithm to detect um, the object or whatever you want to detect um, on top of this different scale image here. So as you can see here, if you do a, a down sampling here along the way, then you will have a smaller and smaller image size and your um, handcraft um, algorithm can can do like a sliding window faction to go through all this different scale and this is how you achieve the scale invariant on the traditional computer vision way and by doing this right you really know that if you have a big object and your algorithms um, before it's detect only uh, smaller objects then you better do down, down sampling then your let's say five to five sliding window can really capture here and not here because it's too big for your algorithm. And that is really the inspirations from um, for the FPN stat to use kind of this um, feature image pyramid way, different size of the image to do some detection there. However, um, there are of course some, some fundamental constraints for uh, leverage this original naive uh, feature pyramid, a uh, feature image pyramid. So we're gonna do some modification for that in order to fulfill um, the the constraint for computations and image. And why do we have those constraints for the naive feature image pyramid? It is because as you already uh, saw that the the feature image pyramid, you have a bunch of different image size. And if you're trying to inference, if you're trying to run your neural network um, on top of this different image, that means per image, you're going to run a multiple of them. And that would dramatically increase the inference time um, um, when you're trying to compute the result. And the second thing is about the memory. Um, while you're training your neural network, right, you need to remember all the image inside your memories because you're going to do some back propagations and that requirements of, of uh, remember a multiple scale of this image that will, that will of course, uh, create a lot of problem for your memory. So what we're try, really trying to do is we, we, we step back and think of um, what is the nature of the convolution. Uh, we know that for a given image, what convolution can do is actually extract the semantic information. So we know that the earlier layers of the convolution layer, they might have very low semantic information, which means, for example, in this case, that's a dog fit in. And probably in the early of the, the layers, you can see some some shape, some uh, cur uh, co corners of the, of the dog shapes. And in the later layers, which means the higher layers that you see the high level information, semantic information, um, maybe is um, the shape of the dog's head and then the, the legs and, and the body and so on. So we already know that <clears throat> onto the different layers of the convolution layers, they contain the different semantic information. However, there are some gap of them. So why couldn't we find a way to collecting all these semantic gaps together. And that actually bring up the, the proposal of the FPN, the Feature Pyramid Network. So we're trying to leverage what we talked about before, the different semantic information on the different layers of convolution layers. And we also trying to combine those um, semantic strong and semantic weak feature together. So if we see the 
image here that really uh, tells you the history, how this idea comes up. So at the beginning, we talked about that already. That's a feature, feature, uh, featureized image pyramid, which um, we talked about on the first slide. And this is the B is actually what convolutional neural network are doing, right? You do a lot of um, layers and then you do the predict in the, in, in the last layer is exactly here. You do a lot of downsampling and then you do the prediction in the last layer. And the C is, uh, is a DSSD fashion that you are um, downsampling that and along the way you predict on the different levels. However, what is the drawback of this? You didn't fully leverage the other semantic information. For example, when you do the prediction here, of course, you cannot see much higher level semantic information because you don't have. That is just the nature of the convolution. So the feature pyramid network, what they do is they combine all this kind of information together. So you can see we combine with the lateral uh, connections. Um, later we will talk about this. The, the, in brief is we connect the weak um, semantic information and strong semantic information together and then to do the prediction afterwards. So by doing that, of course, uh, na uh, naturally you can think you will have more information also from the shape um, because that's a low semantic information and you have a high semantic information that is the uh, shape of the dog face. So <clears throat> then um, I, I try to do a, a pauser here because I kind of feel every time you only think about the FPNs, you kind of lose the, the, the direction where you are on the whole, you know, ocean of, of uh, object detectors. So I'm going to borrow the architecture breakdown from YOLO V4. I have another video for YOLO V4. You can check, check that. So inside a common object detector, there is a usually few components, right? there is an input of your image and then you have a backbone which is like a resonate 15 or resonate structures or whatever structure you want to have here you can have the vgg uh, you name it and then the neck is exactly the fpn we are talking about today so the neck is not the backbone it's just a structures that integrate the feature information so you, you remember we talked about before, you can have your neural network structures and what NEC, what FPN try to do is to combine the different la level of semantic information together and send it back. Probably you have object detector in the end or you already finish here with your classifier, then you can finish here, right? But if you, in this case, it's a common object detector, then you're gonna put either a dense prediction for this for the single stage detections or um, a two stage detection here. So this is really I'm trying to tell you what is the positions of the FPN on in inside the whole architectures of the um, object detector here. So we are talking about today here in this part. So it's it's um, independent of the backbone. And later we will talk about that why independent is so important for the FPN. Okay, and yeah, so the goal of FPN is try to do the feature integrations as we see before. There's a different bunch of backbones. You can have that and then you can use FPN on top of that to combine, to integrate the different semantics information. So FPN, which means FPN is a general purpose architecture. So you can change the backbone. It doesn't affect, you can still apply FPN this is what we say here, FPN is independent of the backbone and also independent of the work you want to do, right? You can do a feature, a regional proposal network, the normal convolution structures, or you can do the object detectors, or you can do instance segmentations, all can, or this purpose of this task, you can use FPN because it's a general purpose architecture. So what FPN is actually uh, doing we're going to talk about a little bit implementation detail is actually we are combined with um, the few different paths of those semantics together. The first one is a bottom up pathway and the second one is the top down pathway and the third is the lateral connections. We're going to talk about here. <clears throat> 
So if we see the implementation details, right, we have one image. It goes through the this we call bottom-up pathway, and that is actually the normal convolution, right? When you're doing convolution, you are downsampling your image, and then you're collecting your features along the way here. And to the final one, right, you have your lateral connections, and then you you have your course, what we say in computer vision, we say coarser means you have a lower resolution, right? Because from such a big resolution, you go down to this really coarse um, image, which has a low resolution. However, even that's the coarsest um, um, image, you have the highest semantic information. And that is exactly what we want. So in order to combine with the same image size, you of course you need to do some upsampling again because you are downsampling along the way. You of course need to upsampling along the way here, and of course to, in order to have the lateral connection, so you can see this 2x up here because this faction is using the ResNet um, backbone. I have uh, another video for ResNet. You can check that. It, basically, the ResNet is just uh, downsampling 50%, 50% along the way. So you're gonna do a 2x upsampling. If you do a different backbone, of course, this 2x, maybe need to modify 3x, 5x, um, depending on your architecture. And for the net lateral connections, you need to make sure the channel-wise <clears throat> the channel -wise information is the same. So then you need to um, have one-on-one -on -one convolution to make sure that the depth of the image is the same size. Then you can do the element-wide addition here. Okay, so if we see another image, maybe um, more um, on understand how, how does it work under the, the condition of we're using a ResNet here. So because ResNet, um, you all know that there is a few different stage. Now there is a first like a convolution layers and start from the convolution two it's a it's a bunch of stage right in, in each stage it's a um, 50 percent reductions of the image size so in the in the last um, in the highest level you need to do a one-on-one -on -one convolution to reduce the channels and you will do a prediction here because that's your highest your your coarsest um, image with the highest uh, semantic information and then along the way go down, you do a 2x upsampling and you do a one-on-one -on -one convolutional um, to make sure your your depth information are the same and you do the element-wise reduction here. And then when you have the result here, you're going to do a 3 times 3 convolution. That is for the alien scene effect because you are doing upsampling here. This is the idea of com com traditional com um, uh, computer vision, right? If you don't understand here, check the keyword aliasing because you are doing upsampling here. You basically, you are doing nearest neighbor to make sure your image can be from 10 to 10, let's say become 20 to 20. And how you come up with those 20 to 20 is you find out the pixel information surrounding the specific pixel and you do some uh, nearest neighbor algorithm there to upsampling 2x there. And then by doing that, you will have some um, some aliasing effect, and in order to make that more smooth, you need to do usually another convolution, or we say Gaussian filter, filter to make sure that this um, this aliasing effect is not there. And this is how we're doing here. And I'm gonna show also a very interesting co-implementations from uh, the Porter Xi. I think this is very intuitive um, to understand by looking at the the, the code right so we're gonna scroll down thank you uh, we're going to thank uh, him again or she uh, for for um, publishing this this um, code here so I really like this um, very easy intuitive way of understanding uh, um, this is exactly the same graph we see all the times right we do some uh, button up pathway and there is a you, uh, along the way you do button up pathway, you are just doing your traditional, let me do a little bit, um, zoom out here. So along the way you are doing this C1, C2, C3, you are just doing your traditional button up pathway. 
and when you go into your um the the, the last layers you're gonna do uh, what we call one-on-one -on -one convolution to reduce the image depth and then that is exactly here what he called the lateral c5 the lateral basically you can, you can check his uh, or she code here that would be just the one-on-one -on -one convolution and this one-on-one -on -one convolution uh, uh, this will be p5 right and p5 you you will go down this is what we call the um, top-down pathway so when you go down you need to pass this up sampling and using the nearest neighbor so you're gonna put the input of p5 and then the input of p5 will be in, in interpolate uh, with the nearest neighbor uh, to the same size the same shape of the c4 that you want to add together right so your c4 need to pass a lateral con uh, um, convolution and then you're gonna do element wise addition here so that's element wise addition and then this the result is called p4 and the p4 you need to do this three times three convolution for the the aliens to anti-aliens effect right so you are doing things here and then you can run your prediction afterwards yeah so that is exactly what i want to introduce for the fpn today i really want to tell um, the idea is why does it help for because it's trying to combine with the different semantic information together um, to to use in these pyramid fashions and this is the second thing I want to emphasize that is this is a general structures so you can use independent of the backbone and you can use also independent of the work you are doing and the third thing is how does the uh, implementation detail is you are using the bottom up and the top down and the lateral con uh, connections and you just need to remember what you what you all doing here is to make sure your your image size and depth is able to do element wise additions and after that you probably need to do an anti aliasing uh, convolution again for for the final prediction that's all for the presentation today thanks